Hello. Can everybody hear me? Could I ask for some screens to um, some cameras to turn on? Thank you, Danny. I can see you can hear me. Um, I would absolutely love to see your faces if that's OK. It's just much easier to talk to um, to people. So that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> OK, um, welcome to Self Care for Working Parents. I am a facilitator with DH Consulting specializing in working parents, and I'm here today to talk to you guys a little bit about how we can take better care of ourselves as working parents because it's not easy. And um, let me let a few more people. There we go. Um, it's not easy, but there are ways to do it. And all we need to do is really just look at ways to integrate it into our daily life. So it really makes a difference to um, to the long term and how we experience our journey as working parents. So before we go into how to do it, I would love to tell you a little bit about myself so you understand why I do this and why I'm so committed to this work. So I have two kids. I have a 10 year old daughter and an eight year old son, and they are amazing. I absolutely love them, but my life changed when I became a working parent from just being someone who's working and dedicated to her, her journey in business. And what I found was, as I tried to balance more things, balance my responsibility as a parent, balance my responsibility in the workplace, what happened was I found that I stopped looking after myself because I was so busy looking after everybody else. And that becomes really challenging. And it's something that most of us or a lot of us fall into. And the problem with that is we lose energy. We don't enjoy every day the same way that we could. And the impact of that on me was it started to affect my confidence. And then when my confidence was shot, it affected how I showed up at work and at home. And it just kind of became this vicious cycle. And that's why I decided that I'm going to dedicate uh, my time and support working parents so we find ways to not let that happen so that we can become an example for our children of what it is like to have a career and still be present at home, but not not take care of ourselves. So to take care of ourselves in the process, because the more we take care of ourselves, the more everyone else benefits. It's just a ripple effect. Now, now that you heard a little bit about me, let's get into what self care is. So it's really interesting because a lot of people use self care in different ways. One thing self care is not is being selfish. So people think, oh, it would be selfish for me to do ABC. Um, it wouldn't be self care then. Pushing your responsibilities onto others. So when you decide, oh, someone else is going to do, um, someone else is, can do it because I'm too tired, but actually not noticing what they have on and not working together. So just pushing your responsibilities onto others because you think, well, no, I'm going to take care of myself. That's not self care. And you know that because it doesn't always feel good. It actually feels um, quite uncomfortable when we do that. And if what you're doing feels uncomfortable, there is a high chance that it's not self-care. Indulgent behavior. So really saying I'm going to go out and go drinking or eat tons and tons of chocolate or things that actually don't feel good after but are indulgent. That is not self-care. Major activities, booking a spa weekend, going off on trips, they're important. It's important to have those breaks in, in your life, in your day to day. But it's that's not self-care. That's just going on holiday or having a spa break. I'm talking about day to day self-care. So self-care is being kind, not only to others, but to yourself. How can we be kinder to ourselves? Self-care is increasing activities that give you energy. So little things that make a really, really big difference. And like I said earlier, self-care isn't indulgent, but it's essential. We need it. You know, you don't need um, a box of chocolates, uh, for an example, but you do need some time to yourself. You do need brain space. So self-care is essential. It's something we need in order to feel satisfied and content with life. And self-care is easy. It's simple. It doesn't need to be complicated. 
while the spa breaks and trips and all of that stuff is awesome, it's great, that is us escaping to feel happy. But what can we do to integrate it into our everyday? That stuff needs to be easy and simple. And that is the kind of self-care that we're talking about today. Okay, so why is it important? Why is self-care important? Well, first of all, it enhances our ability to manage challenges. And the re the, what I mean by that is, here, this is great, if you can see this glitter jar, um, the more stressed we are, the more we're thinking about everything that we have to do, this is what happens. I have to do this, I need to do that. What about this? What about that? And this is how our brains look after our minds. But self-care, self-care calms all of that down and it gives you a bit more clarity. So if you can see, it's becoming clearer the water. Now, everything we need to do, everything we need to do is still there. It's just not taking over anymore. And that means we have space to think differently. So this is how we're enhancing our ability to manage our challenges. This is creating peace instead of chaos. And when you have that, you, you're not so drained, which means you have a lot more positive energy. And it means that our goals, they're gonna be that much more fulfilling. Because otherwise, if on your way to your goals, you constantly feel like this, you're not gonna enjoy the ride. But if we can calm that down, you can enjoy it in a completely different way. And that is how you can enjoy self-care on your way to whatever your goals are, professional, personal, whatever they are. And so as you saw, that provides space in our mind, mental space, emotional space, helping us make better decisions. And these are all the reasons why self-care is so important, especially when we're managing so much all the time. So it's really easy to say, right? Let's do self-care, let's do self-care. But for a working parent, it can be really overwhelming because if you're not looking after your role in the workplace, you're looking after your family at home. So where do I come in? Now, I like to do things in three parts. So we're gonna look at three ways that you can manage self-care and do more self-care, okay? The first thing is gonna be being kinder to yourself, which we talked about. The second thing is gonna be setting boundaries and actually not just setting boundaries, but reinforcing them, actually sticking to your boundaries. And the third part is gonna be doing a lot more of things that you love. And while that might sound really difficult, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do that today, okay? So let's start with the first part, being kinder to yourself. A lot of the pressure we feel can be internal. It can be self-inflicted. Now, that's not to say that we don't have external pressures. We have, we do have. There will be pressures from work, there'll be pressures from home, but there's enough external pressure in our life. There's so much we don't need to add to it. But a lot of the times we do. You know, we think it will look bad if I don't do this. I should have done this. I shouldn't have done that. What will this person think? What will that person think? And we put so much pressure on ourselves. Sometimes if you just stop and ask, wait, is that them? Is that the external world and pressure I can't avoid? Or is this something that I'm creating for myself? It makes a really, really big difference. A good example is the fact that my upbringing comes with certain expectations that I feel I have to meet that I don't have to meet. And I'm learning that over time. So I lived in an extended family after I got married with one of my children at the time. And there were a lot of, I have to do this or that will look bad. My family, when I was growing up, said, when you grow up, you must do this, you must do that. I don't need to anymore. If I'm okay not doing it, if I have the confidence to say that actually that doesn't make sense for me or my family, it's all right. But we don't stop to think about it. We're so automated when it comes to these expectations that were created for us when we were 
really young. And they may have mattered then and they may have impacted us. And you had to be a certain way for self-preservation to because your parents or th those who look after you are in charge and you need them to survive. But now we're grown-ups, and now we can make our own decisions. But because it's so automatic, we don't always do it. So what this word should that you see on the screen, how often do you catch yourself saying, I should have, I shouldn't have? The thing with all these phrases is that they're disempowering. We're basically giving our power away. Now imagine we change the word should to could. I could do this. You might want to. Sometimes things feel worse because we use the word should, but we actually wouldn't mind doing it. And if we stop and just consider what we want, it changes the entire experience. So when I'm saying to be kinder to yourself, I mean, give yourself a voice. Let yourself decide what works for you, what you want to do. And that way, when you do it or don't do it, you don't feel so bad about it. It doesn't drain your energy in the same way because negative feelings drain you. So how can we change the situation to feel a lot more positive? Okay. Part two is setting boundaries. Now this is always really fun because especially when you have a new baby, this happens to a lot of parents when they first become working parents, they start to lose their boundaries because they're drained. And let's be honest, when you don't get a lot of sleep, it's just not worth the fight sometimes. And I understand that. I've been there where you're like, oh, yeah, OK, I'll just do this. Or, yeah, I should do this to prove myself. So here's some examples. A lot of working parents can end up taking on more projects or tasks than can actually be completed in a realistic time frame with good quality. A lot of people end up signing children up for more activities than you would want to because I don't think I'm doing enough for my child. Um, they feel left out from their friends, so I have to do this, even though it's not something that they'll enjoy. The other parents will judge me because I'm not doing more, whatever it is. If it's something you don't actually want to do and they don't want to do, then you're beginning to drain yourself because that takes your commitment to take them places. Committing to more social engagement than you actually have the energy for. So when you feel like you have to go somewhere because they're gonna, someone's going to judge you for not showing up. And there's also the not doing something that you want to because you feel guilty. Not going out with your friends because it'll make you a bad parent or, or anything along those lines. Why are we not doing things out of guilt? You also, just as well as you look after your children and your family and you look after your role in the workplace, how often do you stop to look after yourself and set boundaries to protect you? And this doesn't mean that your family or work is trying to take advantage of you, but it means have you stopped to think that you're allowed to look after yourself in the process? And actually, all these people will benefit because the ripple effect of you feeling better, everybody benefits from, everybody whose lives you touch. So that's all about setting boundaries. And it's really important that sometimes we don't answer someone right away when we're tired, because making decisions when you're exhausted is never a good idea. Think about a grocery store. Yeah, we go shopping at the till, all the chocolate. You are much more likely to pick up a chocolate bar when you're paying because you're tired from doing your shop. How many people actually pick up chocolate that they didn't intend to buy from the confectionery aisle? Very, very few. But a lot of us grab a chocolate bar at the till because we're tired. So we don't make decisions in the same way. And the same way if someone asks you something, a really good tip is thinking, how tired am I? Should I be making a decision right now? Like, is my mind like this? Or is it like this? Really, really important. And that is how you're going to not only set boundaries, but be able to enforce them. Okay, and the last part is doing a lot more of what you love. Now, this is where a lot of people say this is challenging. I can't do, I don't have time for it, right? But let's first stop, before we look at time, I wanna start with thinking 
about what it is that you do love. When's the last time you stopped to think about it? Think about three to five things that make you feel good, like really, really good. And that can be integrated into your daily life. Take 30 seconds and think about it. If you have a pen and paper, write it down. 30 seconds. Three to five things that make you feel good and can be integrated into your daily life. While you're brainstorming, if you need help, it could be something as simple as a nice hot cup of tea with nothing else, just sitting there with a cup of tea. It could be talking to someone in particular that makes you feel really good and really happy. It could be going for a quick walk. So literally anything that makes you feel good and is easy to integrate. We'll take 10 more seconds on that. Okay. Now, take a trip down memory lane for me. Go back to when you were little. What things did you enjoy when you were younger? So again, take a minute and write three to five things you really enjoyed. Some examples from my end are, I loved dancing, absolutely loved dancing. I loved an ice cold glass of water. Like I was never allowed to have ice water and I, when I got a glass of ice water. So what are some things that you loved as a child that made you feel fresh and happy and energized? Take um, another 30 seconds. And be creative with it. Ten more seconds. OK. Now that you have your two lists, step one is one list and step two is your other. Think about how you can start integrating these things into your life. Which one of these things from step one, because step one is usually easier to integrate into your daily life. Which one thing from step one can you do today? If you can pop it in the chat, that would be amazing. Um, and for step two, which one thing from your second list can you do this week? Because sometimes step two is harder to get into your daily life, but you could put it in your weekly routine. So what can you do? For example, I love um, traditional music and I listen to it when I cook sometimes because it's it just fills me with energy. Yeah. OK, whoops. OK. Now let's do a quick poll. Based on how I just defined what self-care is and the way I've explained how simple and easy it can be, think about the fact that is this something that you do at the moment? Do you always do it? Do you sometimes do it or do you never do it? Let me see if I can get the poll up. Bear with me. There you go. Okay. I sometimes, oh, okay. Waiting for a couple more. Okay, so that is awesome. A lot of you sometimes do it, and that's actually really, really good. And for the few of us who do it more often, how great does it feel? Now, for those of you who said you sometimes do or you never do, do you feel like you have some ideas on how you can do a little bit more of this or does it feel possible? Does it feel like it will be easier to do now that you know how, how simple it can be? Pop that in the chat. Do you think that this is more possible to do now that you've seen how simple self-care can be? Okay, and let's reflect. So what impact do you think practicing more self-care will have on your family and friends? What are you thinking? 
do you think it will have a positive impact or a negative impact? I apologize for that. There was an ambulance going by. Or a negative impact. And the reason I ask this is because some people feel, and I understand where they're coming from, that doing more for me means I'm neglecting others. And th so you think it will have a negative impact. In all honesty, do you think we'll have a positive or negative impact? And in what way? Pop in some key words that pop that come into your head in the chat for me. And I want to read them out, so I'm going to wait for you guys to type in a few things. Yeah. Will be inspiring. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, there is a lot of juggling. Absolutely, Richard. There is tons of juggling. And we're going to talk into how talk about it in a second in terms of how you can juggle it. But in terms of the fact that it doesn't need to be huge, I think that's a really big takeaway I would love for you all to think about when you when you go away from here today. Mm -hmm. How it doesn't have to be a big thing. It's little things and focusing on those little things that make a really, really big difference to all of us. Okay. So, Richard, <laughs> how do we create time? There's so much to do. There is so much to do all the time. And I can appreciate that. I want to do something called a busy audit with you guys now. Think about what makes your day busy. OK, write down, just jot down in point form um, on your paper and pad and with a pen and your pad there um, what you did yesterday. You know, what are all the little things you did, which reports you did at work, how many calls you had to go on, um, if you had to cook dinner, if you did any cleaning picking up the kids from school, drop off, whatever it is, just write down the different things that you did yesterday. Once you write down your list, take a look at it. How much of that actually had to be done yesterday? Like it absolutely had to be done, no doubt about it. Because there's a chance that there's at least a couple of things on there it didn't have to be done yesterday, but we feel like it needed to be done right away. What could have been moved? What could have been moved to today, tomorrow, next week, sometimes next month? I have them like, why am I trying to squeeze this in my day today? I don't actually need to think about that for a couple of weeks to a month. But I'm giving it space and my energy. And which one thing, one thing could you have easily replaced? with a small and simple act of self-care. Is there anything on your list that could be integrated with an act of self-care? And what I mean by that is, for example, I love talking. I have one friend who always energizes me and I make sure I talk to her when I fold the laundry. I just know it. I always piggyback my conversation with her while I'm folding laundry. It's simple. It's easy and I still feel like it's time for me or that there's a focus on me during that time. So where can we piggyback a responsibility that we're juggling with something that we, we enjoy, something that feels good? Where can we do that? Okay. So this is all about adopting a healthier perspective. When we start looking at things from a different view. So this slight shift in our perception can help us integrate that calm, that peace, that joy that I'm talking about. Like when I used to be frustrated doing laundry, I'm gonna keep using laundry right now as an example, but when I used to be frustrated, like, oh, there's so much work to do, I changed my perspective on it by shifting my focus to my friends, to me. I still do it, but my focus isn't the laundry anymore. My focus is something that feels good. And in the same way that we can shift our focus in that sense, we can also shift it in what we, the words that we use. I need to go for a walk. 
I'm so exhausted, I need to go for a walk, or I'm so overwhelmed, or I want to go for a walk. There's a lot happening and I really want to go for a walk right now. Saying I need to go for a walk makes me feel like a victim. Saying I want to go for a walk makes me feel empowered. Like I can see this is a lot and this is what I'm going to do about it. And it changes because empowerment is positive. Feeling like a victim is draining. And that's where we, we're not looking after ourselves or our mind. You know, something as simple as when you drink a, your cup of coffee or tea or whatever, noticing that warmth, the taste of the coffee, rather than just having it because I need a coffee. It's like, I'm going to enjoy my coffee and I can be on a call. I can feel how cold my water bottle is and it feels amazing. And actually it's refreshing. But really just shifting our focus when we're when we're doing things on the parts that feel good. Can you see the impact of changing that perspective of re-empowering yourself? You know, a really good example is a couple of years ago, I had my my father-in-law had asked me to go visit an uncle who wasn't doing very well. And I don't know the uncle very well. He goes, you should go. That was it. I felt like I absolutely had to go and I was frustrated and irritated because I had to go there. It was a responsibility between work and picking up my kids. And I took a deep breath and I said, do I want to go? I could go. And I realized, actually, I do. I do want to go go see him because he may not be close to me, but he's very close to my, my husband. And just changing that, that I know he said I should go, but actually I want to go. Like how often do we do things we want to do? But because we feel like we also have to, it's just not enjoyable anymore. It is that much more exhausting and draining for all of us. So I would love to know in the chat, where can you apply the shift in perspective in your life? In the next week, where could you change the way that you're looking at something that actually feels really challenging to you right now? Does anyone want to share? Got to be something, guys. Or if something I've said actually resonates with you, like, oh, yeah, I could change my, I have to go to pick up my kids from school to, I actually, I really want to get there at that time, for example, or whatever it is. Is there something that you've realized now that you're saying you have to do, but actually you want to do, so it doesn't feel so bad? Yeah. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, the outlook of. Yeah, having to read to your daughter at bedtime rather than enjoying it and wanting to. Yeah. If you look at it that way, like oh, I actually want this time with her, like I get this time with her. It's just so much more exciting. It's just kind of shifting it like that. And I love that you found somewhere in your life where you can apply that. Yeah. Who else? Yeah, Tina, the shift makes sense. Yeah. And not only does it make sense, it begins to to energize you and it begins to feel good. And the better you feel, the more of it you're going to do. Picking up my son, but maybe taking a scooter so the walks home are more. Yeah, what a great idea. That is such a cool idea. Yeah, it is. It is self-affirmation when you're when you're doing this and you see the result, you start feeling you're like, oh, yeah, it actually feels good to enjoy my responsibilities in a way by not looking at them as responsibilities. It changes the entire experience. Absolutely. OK. Does anybody have any questions for me? I don't know, Danny, were there any questions earlier? Just turn back to um, page. Okay, not that you saw. Okay, so to sum up, I will summarize why you think if there's any questions for you, for me. But the most important thing about self care, let me actually stop my share. So that will come back to you guys. The most important thing 
about self-care is being able to tap into the little things that actually make a really, really big difference, especially when those little things have to do with your senses. So if we want to take self-care one step further, think about how can you activate your senses? Because the whole example with this glitter jar that I had, you're able to clear your mind quicker when you focus and you activate your senses. Because what you're doing is you're not ignoring the challenge, but you're practicing shifting your perspective. You're building mental muscle when you do that. So if all of you can stop for a minute and just um, rub the, the tips of your fingers together, if you rub it in such a way that you could feel the ridges on your fingertips, you feel that? Just focusing on that when you're stressed out can make a lot of difference because what it does is you're shifting your focus to something that's neutral, making it easier to then go back and deal with a challenge or go back and deal with a, a juggle that you may have. One thing I love to do, especially if I haven't had, I try and keep a five to 10 minute break between like being on calls and picking my kids up from school. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Um, but what I try and do is I, when I hug my kids, when they come out of school, I smell, it doesn't, it doesn't always smell good, but you know, I smell them. I feel the coolness of their skin on me. I feel the temperature of their clothes when I hold them. And just that gives me a minute to just come down a couple of notches. Has anyone ever done anything like that? Have you tried activating your senses in a different way or noticed how different when you go for a walk and you feel the breeze on your face or you notice how the trees are against the skyline? Does, has anyone ever noticed how that makes you feel? It's basically like calmness on steroids. That doesn't make sense, does it? But you know what, what I'm trying to say is it amplifies that feeling of calmness, of clarity, of peace that actually working parents don't often get to experience. How often do we get to feel that peace within us? How often are we, are we not running around? We're always running around. But activating your senses at different parts in the day, even right now, as you're looking at me, if you look at how my hair is falling or how the pattern on my top, that focusing on that, that is a form of building mental muscle and creating calm and just clarity and peace within yourself. Yeah, Tina, I love that. Food, meditation, sensing different flavors. It's amazing. How often do we inhale our food because we're going from one meeting to another? Even while inhaling, you can actually be like, oh, that was really crunchy. Oh, this is a bit sour. Oh, and just noticing it, not judging it, but just noticing it. What difference does that make to those, hopefully more than five minutes you spend eating your lunch? It changes the entire experience. So self-care is about finding ways to change our experiences so that they feel good to us. So that everything isn't a drain, everything isn't something we have to do or we should do, but we get to do, we get to appreciate. Does anyone have any questions now that I've given you some time to think about everything that we've been discussing? Tom is sharing something. Just wait for that. Oops. Just bear with me, I'm just waiting to see what's coming up there. If there's a question to be answered. While we wait for Ahmed, thank you so much for having me here. And I hope that you've been able to take away some key, easy, easy, practical ways to fill your life with more self-care. Easy ways to notice, just notice. In fact, in the next 48 hours, notice how many times you say the word 
words I have to, or I should, or I shouldn't have. And every time you notice it, just be like, hmm, and repeat it. I could, I could have, and just change it to something a little bit more empowering. The first step is noticing when we do this, because in looking after everyone else, it's so easy to forget to look after ourselves. And when we lose touch with ourselves, that's when everything becomes more challenging. So keeping yourself empowered, keeping yourself focused on what you get to do and yeah, on gratitude. Thank you, Ahmed, and gratefulness and gratitude. It changes the experience for working parents completely. Okay, I think that ends. Whoops, let me just share this again. Bear with me. Yeah, thank you so much for your time today. Um, Danny, I don't know if you need to jump on at all, but your next workshop is on communications frameworks with James Potton on the 25th of July. Yeah. There we go. I think that that is everything for me if nobody has any other questions. Yeah, no problem. My pleasure. Thank you all for being here. What I love is that so many of you are here today because it just shows how important this is. And I really hope that you've taken away things that you're going to be applying in the next day. To be honest, that list of things you can do today. I would love for everyone to try and do one thing, even if it's piggybacking on a responsibility of yours. Thank you.